We are Gold Ivy, a health company dedicated to simplifying health and wellness. The industry is lacking the honest experience and grit required to overcome the struggle, and we're here to fill that gap. You decide what works for your daily life and how to transform our lessons into your gold. Join us on the fearless pursuit of self-discovery and growth. This is Ivy Unleashed, a Gold Ivy production. Welcome back. Hello, hello. This is Ivy Unleashed, episode three. Episode three. Welcome back. Today we have a really exciting topic. Uh, Some people love it. Some people hate it. (laughs) But we got to acknowledge it's good for us. Love it. Exercise. We are talking about all things exercise today. It is a huge part of both of our lives Mm -hmm. and something that we talk to clients about on the reg. So. We're going to give you... Not on the reg. On the reg. On the reg. (laughs) Girl jokes. Oh, gosh. (laughs) Anyway, we are going to talk about all things exercise. Before we get into it, just kind of want to talk about what is exercise? Why is it good? What about it? Well, people want to know, you know, what exactly am I supposed to do? Like, what... What even counts? You know, all my doctors say in this, what does that even mean? Yeah, it's very vague and broad. So what do, what do I need to do? Yeah. Well, first of all, um, exercise is, can kind of be intimidating, the word exercise. Yes. So looking at it as movement, just mm-hmm. moving your body. Yes. So it's defined as any movement that makes your muscles work and requires your body to burn calories, get your heart pumping. Mm -hmm. So staying active is one of the most important things we can do to prevent heart disease, improve your personal well-being. We know that there are a lot of great benefits. Mm -hmm. And to get those benefits, the American Heart Association and the CDC, Center for Disease Control and Prevention, recommends at least 150 minutes of moderate intensity aerobic activity each week. You can knock that out in 30 minutes a day, five days a week, however works for you. Your lifestyle, mm-hmm. your busy, your busy life. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, what do we mean by aerobic exercise for those people like you were uh, saying who are questioning, "What do I need to do?" Yeah, treat these benefits. What so, actually gets my heart feeling healthier, or actually helps my blood pressure? Yep, yep. What gets the heart rate up and the blood pumping? Glad you asked. Uh, this includes walking, running, swimming, bicycling, dancing. Bicycling. Bicycling. <laughs> Bicycling. Bicycling. Uh, regular aerobic exercise conditions to the heart pump blood to the whole body. So it's rhythmic movements. Yes. Of the well, legs and arms. Yeah. And all of those things that you mentioned, the walking, running, swimming, biking, dancing, I think that's what is typically on these websites. That's what's on the CDC site. That's what they talk about. But there's so many different ways. You know, I could talk everybody's ear off all day long about exercise because I love getting creative with people. I like exploring how you can challenge your body in any space with no equipment at all. Mm -hmm. That's like my favorite thing to do because we have all these barriers that, you know, our mind can convince us that we have. And I really don't feel like we do. You know, oh, I was traveling. Well, there's some space in that hotel room. I can give you 55,000 exercises you could do to get your heart rate up there. In my 700 square foot apartment, between mm-hmm. the TV and the couch, it's a yoga mat. Mm-hmm. You, you can do a lot on a yoga mat, too. Yeah. Well, and even now with quarantine, it being 2020, we've had to get creative. If your exercise was going to the gym, being on a treadmill or an elliptical, and that's taken away from you, you're forced to get creative. Mm-hmm. And what's good to know is there's so many other things you can do and still get the same benefit out of it. Right. Yeah. And so like for me, my choice is running. I love running. I'll talk about running. You'll hear about me running. I have lots of goals with Mm -hmm. running. Uh, But what I like it for, actually, it's so funny. We're talking about cardiovascular stuff and we'll get more into that too. But I go for a run when I'm feeling angry. I go for a run when I'm feeling overwhelmed. I go for a run when I'm in a good place. And you know what happens on those runs. I am the most creative person. I like, I've never even really considered myself that creative of a person, 
But when I'm running, my ideas are flowing. <laughs> ideas are flowing. <laughs> you guys, I know it's probably not the safest thing, but I bust out Snapchat sometimes on my run because I'm like, I got to tell somebody what's flying through my and mind. And I'm that somebody. <laughs> I always get worried that I accidentally going to hit like my story. <laughs> and it's like, <gasps> let's do it. <laughs> Brooke, I got to tell you, I really have this great idea. But the thing is, you think anyone running wouldn't be able to do that. And the normal human talking as they run, they can't do it. Andrea just, it just flies off the mouth. Like, no big deal. Well, I've had some practice. I was going to say, you train. Yes. yes. When I run with people, I just talk the whole time because most of the time, they're not training for a marathon and, you know, maybe not up to that, like, level of amount of miles that I can run for the most part. And so I just talk the whole time and most people say it goes really fast with yeah. you because but I say don't expect me to talk back <laughs> <laughs> or I'm going to vomit yeah yeah for sure and so I'm typically training for something but the motivator that gets my butt out the door or on the treadmill is my mental health I always feel better when I run it's your therapy yes and for mm-hmm. some people that could be yoga or it could be strength training or it could be boxing it could be swimming and that's the beauty of it there's a million benefits other than you know, bettering your mental health. So I like can't stop talking about, you know, I could tell you what it does to your heart, to your cholesterol, to your blood pressure, tell to us. your triglycerides. I could tell you all of those things and I will. But I do have a really big goal that I want to talk about. Oh, I love talking about this because it's something that I dream about. I think about all the time. I am running all of the states in America, a marathon in each of them, 26.2 miles. Into every in every state. How many miles is that? Can someone do the quick math for us? Oh, twenty six point two times fifty. Yeah, um, it's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of cool to think about, actually. How many miles? Well, and then on top of training, like, you ever think yeah. about how many miles you've ran in your life? That's insane. You that's could probably really cool all thought. the way around the world. <laughs> yeah, too bad I didn't have like a tracker on since I was, you know, Little. nine. <laughs> I always ran with my dad when I was little. He would, he actually, I wonder if this is part of the reason why I love running. I don't know. It's kind of came naturally for me too. And I like to tell people that, that running isn't always easy. It's Mm -hmm. it's typically never really easy once you're just starting, if you haven't kind of had that stamina built up. But my, I'm the youngest of three. I have two older brothers and my dad is a a really good runner Mm -hmm. and he would take my brothers running and I'd be like, I want to go. I want to go. And he'd be like, nope, you're not old enough. When you're nine, you'll get to go. And I was like, sweet, can't wait till I'm nine. And then I turned on, he's like, oh, I said 10. I'm like, what? Oh, so then I was like, you know what? I'm going to show you. I'm going to run faster than all so you So every boys. time I've like, ever ran with my dad, I've never like behind. Because I was like, he didn't think I could do it. He's judging you. Which is funny because he like believes in me more than anybody. Aww. He's like, Andrew, you can do anything. So I've had a passion for running. And I decided that. I wanted to run a marathon out of college. It was kind of like, I need a goal. I need something. I graduated college. Let's do something. Mm -hmm. And my father-in-law is an Iron Man. I think he's done eight or nine. He's a beast. He is a beast. Shout out Bill Herbert. Yes, he is awesome. And he has done a bunch of marathons before I decided this, or had done it. And so he said, I'll do it with you. I'll do a marathon with you. So my husband, brother-in-law Brandon, and Bill, we all ran the Twin Cities Marathon. And it was the first time that I felt like this is the distance for me. I felt like I did track in middle school and I did cross country in high school. And I was good at it, but I never really felt like I got my my stride. Yeah, well, it was challenging. It was super challenging because they weren't meant for me. So I was like dying at the end of them. Gotcha. And in a marathon. But you weren't dying after 20 6.2 Six point two. Oh, I definitely <laughs> felt like death after a few of them. So I've done 19 of these. 19. Yes. And a lot of them have been with Bill. Justin, yeah. my husband, has done a couple with me. Brandon's done a couple with me, which is great when people join you. But I've had a lot of different experiences. And what I love about it is there's a lot of states I probably, like, I think I would have gone to, but I don't know for sure. Yeah. Like, like Utah, what Idaho. I, oh, I want to go to Utah. But Idaho, Boise is so beautiful yeah and is so friendly like everyone there's so friendly and I had the best food the best beer I just didn't even expect it and I think maybe that's part of it I wasn't expecting that I don't know why it's yeah never really but what a cool way to get you outside of your comfort zone places you would never even think about traveling to yes extra family time you just road tripped with your family RV'd it up 
Yeah, I've had a lot of cool experiences with a lot of different family members. I've had road trips with my mom, and I've had, you know, fun experiences in, like, Vegas with, you know, friends. Yeah. And I've seen a lot of things in these marathons that what have you I would seen? have not have seen. I mean, I've had some struggles where I thought I was going to have to stop at mile 13 because I was in Vegas, and... I ran into Justin because he was just doing the half, and mm-hmm. I was like, I think my knee is, I think my knee is, my leg's going to fall off. Oh, my gosh. Something's wrong with my knee. And so he sprinted ahead. He ran into a convenience store on the strip, and he chucked a $5 bill at the cashier <laughs> and grabbed some Excedrin from the rack and ran out. And then I just changed my stride and, and was able to finish. But it was sleeting, and I thought I would never run again because I was oh, like, this is the gosh. most painful thing ever. And that was marathon, like, Four or five. Look at you. Clearly done more. Right now I'm at 19. I'm curious about these states. Yes. How do you feel about a rapid fire describing your experience with some of these? Sure. I mean, it's been, I started doing these 11 years ago, so I think I remember all of them so far. All right. You ready? Yes. All right. First couple words that comes to mind. Maybe first two words. Okay. Ready? Arizona. Arizona. Cool landscape. Ooh. Cactuses are cool. Cacti? Cactus. Cacti. Cacti are cool. <laughs> They're so old and big. I didn't realize how big they were. Yeah, was it, were you just dying in the heat? Not at all. It was oh. like 50 and it even rained a little Beautiful. bit. It hadn't rained in like 40 days, they said. But it was really cool. Good luck so. charm. All right, California. Ideal conditions. Mm-hmm. Pennsylvania. Was, Pennsylvania. Oh, Philadelphia is so cool. I would just say great culture. Okay. Ohio. Ohio. I think a friendship because my best friend Britt was there cheering Aww. me on. And that was just cool to visit her when she was in grad school. Wyoming. Most beautiful place in the U.S. I've seen. Really? Yes. Wyoming. The mountains. Oh, it's just breathtaking. Okay. All right. Last one. Oregon. Oh, I would say... That's a tough course. The The Portland Marathon is a really tough course. But I would say it's beautiful hiking because that's just the experience of hiking okay. there. And the waterfalls is gorgeous. Is there a place you went that wasn't beautiful? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I wouldn't say North Dakota is not beautiful, but it's just flat. and so Different than the other yeah, views you it had. It was a great race. People are there are really friendly because it was a great race because it was flat and it was really good conditions. I think it's in... May. So that's the one I should start with. Is what you're <laughs> yeah, I would say start there or end there. Like if you're going to do 50 states, I feel like it should be. Well, the last I, one. I would do no. maybe one state. Yeah. Well, this goal has been, it's, it's hard to get a lot done fast. I mean, I wish I could do one every two weeks because then I just stay in shape for it, but it's expensive. I have three kids. I don't really run that much when I'm pregnant or breastfeeding. And that's just me. Some people can the whole time. I have a friend that ran the Boston Marathon pregnant. I don't, I don't think she knew she was pregnant, but if, regardless, she loved running pregnant. Warrior. She felt good for it the whole time. It's super expensive. You know, I just wish... It's time-consuming, like you said, on top of mm-hmm. all of your other responsibilities. Yeah. And then you have to train for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I'm human. I get in a rut. I have injuries. You know, there was this time after that Vegas marathon I was just talking about where mm-hmm. I was like, I will do anything to never have this happen again. And someone told me about the book Born to Run. Oh, yeah. And that inspired me to, I'm like, I was built to run barefoot. I'm going to run barefoot. I was going to say, didn't you train on your treadmill without shoes on? Barefoot. Yes, barefoot. Yep. Actually, I live in an apartment building, so I think I grossed some people out, but whatever. <laughs> I'll never see them again. But I wanted to strengthen all of the, the muscles the muscle in my toes yeah. and my feet and my ankles and stuff. And so I did that because I was like, I'm never... I never want to experience this again, what I experienced in Vegas. And so I did those barefoot shoes. Yeah. And then I did a couple marathons in those, and that really hurt, like, the, the sole oh of my the bottom gosh. of my feet. Let alone <laughs> so I, in super comfy shoes, barefoot. Yeah. Yeah, so I love the physical challenge. I love the mental challenge. I mean, anybody that's ran any type of race, you know that it's a mind game the whole entire time. Mm-hmm. You convince yourself, there's no way I can do this halfway through. All of a sudden, you feel like you're superwoman. Then you feel like you're going to shit your pants. And then you're you like... You do shit your pants. Some people... <laughs> I've seen this. This chick in Des Moines, which is also a very beautiful city. Didn't know that. 
Okay. She sprinted past me at mile <laughs> 21, right? And everybody that was seeing her was, like, turning around and looking at her. And then, like, whoa, she had, like, liquid shite <laughs> down her legs. And I was thinking, you know, good for her. I would, I would not want to stop. If I drove an RV like I did to Wyoming and I got to mile 21... I would be calling Justin, come get me new shorts right now. Maybe yeah, she did. I, and she just had to yeah. keep going until... Yes. Well, she. I heard her say to her dad, and who I think was her brother, tell mom to meet me at the finish line with shorts. <laughs> <laughs> but, so I was thinking, what I probably would have done, there was a pond we went by right at that time. I probably would have just swished, took my shoes. Little, and mm, mm, mm. But she clearly was running a really fast time. Yeah. She finished it in like 3.15. And 3.15. 3.15, Yeah. And wow. so, because I looked up her time, because I was, I, I finished that one pretty fast. There was only a couple chicks in front of me, and I was like, I need to know. You know who it is. I knew who it was. I figured out her name. Shit didn't stop her. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's, I think she's a badass. She's a warrior. Oh, my gosh. I know oh what's going to happen to me. I'm only at 19, so sometimes this is what I do. So my husband, Justin, is, like, my biggest cheerleader, and sometimes if a marathon's <laughs> small enough... Like Yankton's River Rat, South Dakota Marathon, he can bike next to me the whole time. In that one, I was like, I'm glad you're biking because I feel like today's the day I might shit my pants. I feel like if you didn't shit before you started, like, you just know it's coming. You got 26 miles for it to hit. That's every and it's every marathoner's worst nightmare. And so we all sit in the bathroom to the last second trying to get it out. And if you don't, you look at whoever's there with it and you're like, you know what? And it's tough because I, I'm competitive <laughs> with myself. I want to get done really fast, so I do not want to stop yeah. ever. And luckily, guys, they can, like, find a bush, quickly pee a little bit and go. Like, chicks can't do that. It's a pain in the butt. And sometimes marathons have hardly any porta potties I feel like you can't even feel the lower half of your body. <laughs> I mean, my experience with training. And so it just kind of, flo- I don't know, flows and... You just keep going. Nothing can stop you. Oh, my gosh. Well, and women have more things to think about than men. Yeah. I feel like there's two type of people listening. The people who totally know what you're saying right now and are like, yes. And then there's the people that are like, what the hell? Also. You run marathons and worry about shit in your pants? Like, it's really worth it? What? I'm telling you, though, if I am ever your health coach or your personal trainer, I will get you to believe that you can run a marathon. Well, yeah, you've done it all. You've thought about it all. Yeah, and anybody can do it, but we put those limits on ourselves of what we think we're capable of. Yep. And I don't know why we do that. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Because our comfort zone mm. is comfortable. Yeah. And we just got to push past, and it's hard. Yeah. We like to feel comfortable, and it's something that we've never done before. Yeah. And what if we Scary. fail? True. What if we fail? Yeah, I have a client that he. Won't sign up for anything unless he feels like he's the most competitive that he's ever been. Like, he doesn't ever want to have a time that's worse than his last one, which is so much pressure to put on yourself. Well, you don't, well, I wouldn't even want to do it in that case if I'm scared of risking not mm-hmm. doing, being better. Yeah. Yeah. Well, with running, though, I, I am not always training for a marathon. I am not always running even more. Sometimes, most weeks, I'm not even running more than three miles at a time. Yeah. I think people assume that I'm always running these crazy miles. How do I fit in the time? And it's just not even what I do. I usually fit in a run in under 30 minutes in the morning. And for for me, it truly is for my mental health. It's not anything that's like I need to keep up to burn calories or anything like that. It's honestly like if I start my day with a run, I'm nicer to people. Yeah. And you I just, know how much better you're going to feel. Yes. I feel good about myself, and I know it boosts my mood. I know it boosts my energy, and I need it yeah. all day long. So, Well, yeah, it's just like people with yoga or strength training hitting the gym first thing in the morning. Mm-hmm. They know that it's going to set them up for success, and yes. they're going to own their morning, which is going to allow them to own their day. Mm-hmm. And they prepare for it by sleeping in their workout clothes or yes. setting out their clothes the night before. I am not going to get out of bed if I have to think about grabbing a sports bra or a pair of trying to find my running socks when it's pitch black. Well, you're like already blacked out. <laughs> yeah. Like 30 minutes later, then you wake up and you're running on the treadmill. Yes, totally. 
<laughs> yeah, and I want to just mention, too, that I think having a treadmill is a super privileged thing for me. Like, I, I know that a lot of people don't have a treadmill. This is something that most people don't have in their home. And there's a lot of ways to get your heart rate up without a treadmill. Yeah. There's so many resources, and I love sending them to people. There's so many websites. We have a website with free workouts that you can utilize. That, that you don't need any equipment no for. Equipment. 10 yeah. minutes or less. Strength training ones, core ones, cardio ones. Some stretching when you're sore from doing all of them. Yes, and some people don't like videos. Some people like to have a trainer with them. We got that too. Yeah. I can help you with that. So I'll keep you all posted on my progress. I'm 19 down. 31 to go. What's your next one? Well, I was supposed to do Louisville a couple weeks ago. And so I got to defer that just with COVID and everything. So I actually don't have one planned. And it makes me sad. I want to have one planned. I really want, I like to have something to look forward to, to have, because I love to travel too. And so it fits perfectly together. So I think maybe that's one of my small, small steps for this week. Plan your next one. Yes. Want to come with me? Yeah. Should we make it Nashville? (laughs) So I was supposed to run a marathon with Andrea, my very first one. Hmm. And that didn't happen. Uh, Partly due to COVID. Well, mostly due to COVID now. But I also wouldn't have been able to if if, uh, it was still on. Um, Medical mystery. (laughs) I was training for... I can't wait till you have a name for it. Do you think you'll have a name? Maybe we shouldn't even say that. No. No. Um, well, it's called um, a bulging vein on my leg. <laughs> <laughs> because Brooke came to me and she was like, I got to show you my leg. Something's wrong. Something is really not right here. Yes. I woke up. Uh, so I was training for a marathon. I got to mile 18. Ran 18 miles for nothing. Which no. is the hardest part. The hardest part in cold weather, shitting my pants, all these things that, uh, you know, I, but I felt like such a badass running 18 miles. Like, are you kidding me? So even if you're not completing a marathon, still training for one and pushing yourself past limits that you never thought imaginable you could do Mm -hmm. is something that I highly, highly recommend. Whatever it is. Did you think that that was something you would do? Oh my God, no. When did, when did you think, oh, I could do this? Oh, that's a good question. Well, the reason I decided to run it is uh, thanks to some red wine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a very competitive person, and Thank you, you mix wine. some red wine in there and an Andrea special, and she's talking about how she's running marathons, and I'm like, why can't I run a marathon? Andrea's special is when... Typically, it does involve some red wine. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't have to, clearly. Yeah. But I like to get into your deep desires, passions, and, and connect. And All I, the things. I just wanted you to just run a marathon yeah. in Nashville. And, and so, we yeah. And and um, she was like, I think I'm going to Nashville. I was like, I'll do it with you. And then the time to sign up came. And I was like, oh, shit. I really <laughs> did say I would do that. And so I signed up. Our uncle, my uncle, her father-in-law. We were us three, we're going to do it. And we're all training. And I woke up one morning with this crazy bulging vein on top, on top of your ankle. On top of my ankle. And it literally, you guys, looked like a worm <laughs> was on top of my ankle. I laugh about it because that's just how I cope. Um, it was actually really sad. But uh, it came out of nowhere. And as days progressed, it got worse and just really painful, shooting pain all the way up my leg. I ended up uh, going to a vein clinic as a 24-year-old. 24. Am I 80 years old going to a vein clinic? Yes. Did you see any other 24-year-olds? Absolutely not. Are you kidding me? I walked in. I shouldn't laugh, but I just picture him walking in just being. I walk into this vein clinic and they're like, what are you, what, what are you doing in here? Like you were way too young. Like, I know I'm young, but this is what's happening. Can you please help me? Are you trying to work here? (laughs) seriously but no so I had an ultrasound done and basically I had reflux going on meaning that my valves in my vein my GSV the great saphenous vein I was learning all about veins and uh, wasn't working but it shouldn't be causing that much pain it was weird no one could tell me really what was going on they kept saying it was just so so bizarre 
Like, I know it's bizarre. It's weird, but this hurts. Please help, help me. Help. I'm supposed to be running a marathon. And so long story short, I ended up in the ER, in urgent care. It was causing a lot of crazy pain. Um, so they think that it attached itself to a nerve. That shot for all the way up from my ankle, all the way up to my groin. So my whole right leg. And everyone thought I was crazy, myself included, because this is a bulging vein that came out of nowhere. Uh, long story short, I had two procedures to get it taken care of. I'm still healing. I'm not able to run or do vigorous exercise until spring. Wow. So exercise is kind of a touchy subject for me right now. Yeah. I totally used it as my stress relief and my therapy running became really, really therapeutic for me. Like I said, I was pushing myself past barriers that I didn't think I was capable of. And then in the midst of COVID and getting all of my social interactions taken away, well, then exercise was ripped away from me. So I really had to figure out something else to do. And although I am a firm believer in exercise uh, to help with all of the things, mental health especially, you got to get creative. Mm -hmm. And I turned to yoga because I can still do yoga. And so that's really something that has helped me. And I found a, a love for that in the meantime. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important to figure out what works best for you. And it's different every season of life. Right. So how did that process go? So you're obviously like grieving something you can't do during a hard yeah. time. So you have no control over. Did you try a bunch of different things or were you like, I know that I've kind of done yoga in the past and I know that's helped me. Maybe it could replace for now this running exercise. Yeah. Well, it got to the point where walking, I couldn't even walk. I had um, my boyfriend Ian when it was really bad and I went to urgent care. So he broke his leg. So he was in a boot and we walk into urgent care. Power couple. <laughs> me on his crutches. He's in a boot and we both have masks on because it's COVID and was it April Fool's Day? Uh, honestly, it might have been. It sure as hell felt like it. We walk in, and people are just looking at us like, oh, my gosh. I get a wheelchair. He's pushing me in a wheelchair with a broken leg. It was power couple for sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it hurt so bad that I couldn't even walk. So I first started walking, started small once I felt okay to walk. Then I had to figure out, okay, what can I do? Because I couldn't squat. I couldn't lift heavy. And this has been for almost five months now, which is crazy. So I've just started getting back into yoga, listening to my body. Mm -hmm. And if something doesn't feel right, kind of tweaking it and doing what I can do and just telling myself that I'm going to get there. Mm -hmm. I've already come a long way. Mm -hmm. I remember laying in bed in such an awful mental place thinking I was never going to walk again without pain and wishing I had just broken my ankle because then it would heal. Right. I have no idea what is going on. And they went in and literally took a laser and closed up my vein, which is just crazy to think about. Yes. Wow. Um, but it's connected me with a lot of people who um, had this go on for them too. And I've dealt with this and was never something I even knew was a thing. <laughs> right. Well, you, you hear of the varicose veins yep. when you're older, and that's typically like a genetic thing. Yep. So I'm just learning how to pivot, mm -hmm. and I know that exercise is important. I know how good it is for me, not only um, physically, but physiologically. And so yoga is huge, which strength training mm -hmm. is important too, and that falls under that. Mm -hmm. And it's telling myself that, okay, I'm still reaping the benefits. Mm -hmm being creative not losing all your muscle mass yeah not losing I mean I definitely feel like I did yeah. I challenged myself in other ways I did whole 30 uh, I did some really restricting eating at that point to figure out other health issues and so I kind of used it as motivation just like training for a marathon having a race in front of you as motivation I kind of switched that motivation mm -hmm. to my eating habits what do you mean by restrictive I don't want anybody thinking like you didn't eat or anything. Or yeah, anything. no, no. Restrictive to find uh, food sensitivities. Okay. So I'm trying to find triggers. So cutting out gluten, dairy, soy, mm -hmm. um, lectins, different sorts of vegetables. Um, and Have you ever had a fully cut out caffeine? Yeah, it's 
hell. <laughs> that would be really hard. Well, I could coffee. only do black coffee, and I and I'm such a creamer girl. And so I got to black coffee, and I realized, okay, it made me feel better. Mm-hmm. That's good. And I can do it, and it's cheaper. Saving some money. <laughs> and my Starbucks drink went from $9 to 2 Yeah. <laughs> so that was a win. Yeah. But point being, exercise can look different for everyone. Mm-hmm. There's so many different things that you can do. Like Andrea's passion about running. That is her thing. That makes her feel alive. Yoga has become that thing for me, which I never knew. Mm -hmm. And sometimes these tragedies force us to pivot and we discover things that we never would have even tried. Right. Well, and you could have just sat and sulked about it. And rightfully so. I would be so upset if I think about that all the time. Like, what if I couldn't run? Yeah. What would I do for my mental health? You know, I don't even know. I don't want to think about it. I know yoga is great. I know that there are a lot of different practices, but... It's just been so much a part of what I do. Who you are. And this big yeah. goal. And I feel like that easily could have happened for you. You know, did you have any like accountability with this? Like ask me if I'm doing this. Or are we like, you know what? I, I got this. This is something I should do. And just kind of held yourself accountable. Yeah. Well, I think until you're really ready, you know, accountability is great, but you have to want it yourself. True. And you have to take also take the time to grieve. So I knew that I wasn't in the place where I could work out. Even though it would help me, I knew it was going to hurt me because I was already in pain. Mm -hmm. So I had to focus on other ways to get my mind right, to get my body right. Once I was ready, taking it one step, one small step at a time. Mm -hmm. And I think about this a lot too. You know, exercise is huge for anxiety and depression and things that I've dealt with because of my circumstances and different things I've ran into and being totally isolated, not being able to exercise, not being able to walk, laying in bed, having a pity party. Now winter. Now winter. (laughs) Yeah. And in Minnesota, you know, I think we, it's important to let ourselves feel all the things Mm -hmm. and then move on. Yeah. Have that time. Process it. Process it. Right. And move on and that step stepping stone of moving on can look different for everyone Mm -hmm. for me it was figuring out okay what do I need to do who do I need to ask for help because clearly I felt like I was climbing a mountain and the avalanches just kept coming and knocking me down you had appointment after appointment after appointment and even before this vein situation where you're like getting your hopes up oh this is I had a good you know, suggestion mm-hmm. from someone. This is a referral. Everybody has rave reviews of this position. Maybe they'll try and help me. Also, maybe I can get into Mayo. Maybe that could happen for me. Yeah, it's, it felt like a lot and it was a lot. And for me, what helped me get moving was taking it small, setting little goals of, okay, today I'm going to hit 5,000 steps. Mm-hmm. Okay, today I'm going to hit 10,000 okay, I'm going to walk 30 minutes. What do I love to do that I can do right now? Okay, walking around the lakes in Minnesota are something that bring me so much peace. I can listen to a podcast and just walk, Mm -hmm. take go at my own pace. And being quarantined and being able to walk outside, that's something that I looked forward to. Yes. And so that's really important. Listening to your body And also having accountability, like Andrea said, reaching out to people around me and, you know, hey, will you walk with me? Oh, yeah. Then you can connect with people that you love and care about you too and check in on them, have something else to think about when I'm sure you're thinking about when your body's in pain, how can you not think about yourself and what you're going through? Right. Yeah. And just who you surround yourself with, what you surround yourself with. So in those situations, just blasting positivity podcasts I'd listen to Mm -hmm. just totally getting into it and you know even in my situation it's like that for a lot of people when it comes to exercise it's your therapy it's Mm -hmm. your time to really reflect dig deep and I mean we can't talk enough about how therapeutic exercise (laughs) is and even when you don't have it Mm -hmm. something for me was looking forward to that Mm -hmm. right kind of uh training myself to get back there yeah and having that to look forward to and to push myself 
to drive, to get out of bed when I knew, okay, well, if I just get out of bed, I just have to let my feet hit the floor. I just have to get up once I'm up. When you're in motion, it's easier to remain in motion. Mm -hmm. And it's hard. I totally feel for anyone who knows what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Been there. I'm still there some days, most days. It's hard, but there are things that you can do. You just need to believe that you can do it and start with one thing. Yes. Well, I'm glad that you're sharing this because, and I'm so sorry that you've gone through this. You know, it's I could cry for you because it's been a long time of you just being unsure about what your body's going to do next or mm-hmm. trying a lot of really actually some crazy things that you've tried. She, you blew in, you had to blow some air into some tubes for like. You guys, I just, this is a sidetrack from exercise, <laughs> but um, I just got tested for SIBO, which is small intestinal bacteria overgrowth. And how one of the tests for SIBO is testing your hydrogen levels in your breath. I was like, hey, Brooke, could you be over here at like nine to record? And she's like, well, hold on. I've got to blow in these tubes for three hours. This is my life. Literally, you guys just wait. You mm, you think you've heard it all. But no, so I had to fast all day Friday. And then I had to wake up. This test took three hours. I had to be awake for an hour. So I woke up at five so that I could start at six. And I didn't have any coffee because you can't have anything other than water. Then I had to drink a bunch of glucose. <laughs> straight sugar Mm. packet (laughs) and every 20 minutes for three hours I had to blow into these tubes and I'm still waiting my results we'll see (laughs) well your barriers look very different Uh, than my barriers but the thing is everyone's barriers look different that's true yeah yeah and mine are being a parent with three small kids and I think anybody can relate to just feeling like you have barriers Mm -hmm. you know in coaching that's what we talk about a lot because it's like this is your life. Let's talk about what could get in the way. Yeah. If it sounds like it might be a negative thing when people set these goals and I say what could get in the way, but it's not because it's real life. Yep. It's just life can get in the way. So how can we work around this? And I love being strategic and, and finding those pockets of time with people because, you know, research shows even 10 minutes impacts your cardiovascular health. Mm-hmm the health of your heart, just 10 minutes. And so I think people have this idea that I need to fit in 60 minutes or nothing. Like I know, you know, five years ago, I used to go to the gym at 5 a.m. and I worked out for an hour and then all of a sudden they haven't for years. And so they have this like ego about breaking it down to like 30 minutes even, you know? And I, I think it's important to be flexible for the sake of the longevity of your life, you know? You want to be around for your kids or your grandkids or, you know, you want to have this big full life, but you have to fit it in in pockets. You can build strength between meetings and do as many push-ups as you can. I actually do those right before I get in the shower because I get a little Mm. sweaty. I'm going to get sweaty thinking, but (laughs) so I like to talk to, you know, parents or anybody in general around just getting started finding these little pockets. So you're walking from your room to your kid's room to put them to bed, do walking lunges all the way that you get there. Yep. You're waiting for something to heat up in the microwave, do as many squats as you can do. You know, yeah. fit it in in different places. I mean, if you're, you know, in the middle of a, a meeting in person, it might be a little bit, a bit awkward during a meeting. <laughs> Just some squats. squats. I keep talking. I'm listening. Just <laughs> <laughs> working on my quads here, my glutes. <laughs> but yeah, fitting those in in short pockets of time. And I think something that's really important to talk about, because I think a lot of times when we read this research, it's about cardio. Mm-hmm. And a big missing piece is strength, strength training. training. Yep. And, uh, you know, some people don't know how to strength train. They don't know where to start. And it can be overwhelming. Mm-hmm. But it's so important because what does everybody want to know? They want to know, how do I boost my metabolism? You know, as I've gotten older, I just, I just. So slow. It's just not working like it used to. The weight just is packing on me. It's packing on me. And so, I mean, there's a million things we can explore when it comes to your metabolism, but something that is bright right in front of your face, you know, you're getting on your treadmill for 30 minutes a day. How about we even cut that in half? and do some strength training. Mm -hmm. It's so important. When you increase your muscle mass, you boost your resting metabolism. And that makes your body burn more calories while you're doing nothing. We just burn calories throughout the day, sitting at your desk working. Your body is working, it's burning calories. But you can boost your metabolism through different forms of exercise, especially if it's strength training, because the more muscle we have on our body, 
the more calories we burn. Mm -hmm. I don't know why that's not on all of these websites. (laughs) If people just knew that, it's crazy. They think, and it's really sad that especially women Mm -hmm. worry about bulking up or not looking feminine. And it's a super unfortunate thing. You know, confidence is something we're going to talk about a lot. And we really want to empower people to feel just confident no matter how you look. Any body type. Girls, you are women. You are beautiful. And we want to talk about, you know, incorporating strength training and without that fear or pushing past that fear. And also, you are not going to look like Rambo I was just- or the Hulk if you figure out how to do 20 push-ups in a row. No, and then you're going to feel like a badass but also, because I just did 20. But also, if you do look like Rambo, like, awesome, because Rambo's sweet. Let's go. And strong women are everything I want to be. I, I love when someone is so sculpted. I, like, to me, oh, I just love that look. But, um, you know, you may just, like, doing push-ups, make, maybe even doing more squats. You'll just see more definition in your legs, and it feels good, and that's what people talk about, like, I want to tone up. I want to look this way and whatever. Strength training is your answer to look that firm look that you're looking for. You're not going to get that from hitting the treadmill. You need to incorporate strength training and doing push-ups, things like that. You know, people want to like work on their sculpt, having sculpted arms or backs, you know, in their swimsuits or whatever, like push-ups are hard. But it's just like an example of a full body exercise for strength that training. That you can do. Yes, with mm-hmm. no equipment. No equipment, yeah. And it doesn't have to be push-ups. I mean, that's that tends to be like the most hated exercise ever. No burpees. Oh, burpees. No, but I think, uh, you know, a lot of people that I talk to hate cardio. But they think there's all these myths and beliefs that it's what you have to do. And the more cardio you do, the more calories you burn. And then they just get so burnt out and lose interest Mm -hmm. in just being on the treadmill, where if you could just switch it up a bit, get some variety in there. Like you're saying, cut the treadmill half in time in half, Mm -hmm. add in some conditioning, some strength training. And the more variety that you put into your routine, the more you boost your metabolism. So basically, you're trying to keep your body guessing, what's coming next? What am I doing? That's why interval training is so important too when you're trying to when you are trying to burn calories, you yeah. know, maybe your doctor talked to you about, you know, being overweight and, and your cholesterol or something, and you really do want to get in some cardio, great. Sometimes, if it's recommended by your physician, interval training can really help you burn a lot of calories because your body's kind of guessing, well, what are we doing now? What are we doing now? You're constantly switching it up, and <laughs> yes. it's not getting comfortable. Yes. It doesn't know what's coming next. So variety is totally. good. Variety is so important so we don't get bored. It's important so we challenge different muscle groups. You know, the more that we do that, the better we feel about, you know, that routine. We look forward to it. Some people like doing the same thing every day. Power to you. Keep it up. Stay on the treadmill. Stay on the elliptical. Honestly, the number one key (laughs) is do what you enjoy. Yep. You have to like it. And you have to experiment with multiple different things to really find what fits best for you. Mm -hmm. And like I said before, different seasons of life, different things. If group fitness is huge for you, that's something that I loved. And unfortunately with COVID isn't an option, but you be creative with it. There are Zooms, you can do lives Mm -hmm. with groups. There's so many different things. If you don't have a treadmill at home, okay, whip out a yoga mat order some weights. You don't even need weights. You can use your body as a weight. Mm-hmm. Google it. Go to goldivyhealthco.com. <laughs> Click on our, our workout page. It's it's there for you to explore. It's there for you when you're ready. And if, if you're not ready to incorporate it, you know, think about other ways that you can benefit your health and well-being. But we are here for you if you want any tips. We are here for you if you want some exercises that you can try at home. We have resources that we can send to you if if you don't know where to start. Mm-hmm. And then on our social media, we'll always be posting different workouts that we're trying. So yeah. if you want to just follow along with what we're doing too for some ideas, we are always going to be doing songs. That. Our newsletter is going to include our top three workout songs for that yes. week. Um, yes. Music is a huge part of who we are, what gets us pumped. And yeah, I think that's the same case for a, yes. a lot of people. We love sharing the, the music that we're listening to because I think – you know, we obviously have two different workout mm-hmm. styles, and we are 10 years apart, so we have different interests at all times. Yep. Luckily enough in common that this is... Going to work. Yeah. Hopefully. 
<laughs> no, but, but we're going to include that in the, the newsletter each week. You know, three songs that we're listening to that really help us, and we'll let you know what exercises we're doing and give you some tips there, yeah. too. You know, music is a huge stress reliever for me. Just jamming mm-hmm. and then adding exercise with that is huge. And right now, more than ever, stress is skyrocketing. And I think we can all agree that stress levels are a little higher than usual. And so if we can help ease some of that stress, provide you what's working for us, Mm -hmm. and help you reap the benefits, that's what we're here for. So Absolutely. Well, should we get to our gold stars? Now it's time for our three gold stars. All right, number one, find a practice that you enjoy. Two, move your body 30 minutes every day, no matter how you do that. Three, pick an accountability buddy to check in on your exercise goals. Could be a coworker, partner, friend, or even your journal. All right, what's one thing you do to center yourself before exercising? Before exercising, I don't center myself. I jump on the treadmill or run out the door, and I don't think I'm half blacked out in the morning sometimes because I'm too tired to even think. <laughs> and that's what actually wakes me up. So, not, so nothing. not thinking, just not, doing. Not thinking. Yes, I don't center. I just, I just mindlessly walk toward the treadmill or out the door. Which I think helps because the more you think about it and have that conversation in your head about all the reasons you shouldn't, be exercising. I like it. Don't think, just do. That's right. All right, Brooke, when you're really struggling to get motivated to exercise, what's one thing that steers you in the, in a positive direction? Hmm. Honestly, TikTok. Really? Yeah. I, uh, so? so one thing you guys will learn about me is that I love to dance. Me too. And also I love you. Yes. (laughs) And cardio. I get on TikTok. Oh my gosh. If you guys have ever done a TikTok dance, that is the greatest workout of all times. Maybe for me, especially because I'm a perfectionist and I have to get it right and I do it a million times. Anyways, um, I get on TikTok and I see all these girls dancing, moving their bodies, and it just kind of gets this inner fire going in me. That's why I can't watch TikTok before I go to bed. I get too amped. So amped. Yeah. And the music and... Yes. And then I keep going and I see all these girls. And it's something that I have to be in the right headspace of, okay, I'm not comparing. Mm -hmm. I'm using this with intention to get me going. And it really just is like, oh, if they can do it, I can do it. Let's go. Mm Mm-mm. All right, number three. (laughs) What's one thing you wish you would have known sooner about exercise? I wish I would have known sooner that, you know, those races that I was running weren't really meant for me. I, Mm -hmm. when I was in high school, I had all this pressure because I was a fast runner. I would be in first place a lot, but I would, I would get so nervous ahead of time because I would typically be in front and I wouldn't know where to go on these cross country courses. And I almost like, not that I regret doing that or running those races, but I wish I would have known that this really isn't the race for you because I could never really get, like, I, I would just die after those things. I didn't feel good for a couple days, which is also like, why was I even doing yeah. that? I didn't enjoy it, but I was good at it. And I went to state both years I was in it. And so people expected me to do it. And I just, I kind of wish I would have known, you know, it's okay. You don't have to put this pressure on yourself because- the marathon is your race. Yeah. Kind of like uh, you learned how to listen to your truth. Yes. Yes, for sure. I love it. All right. Lastly here, your piece of gold. This week's quote is by Arthur Ashe. Start where you are. Use what you have. Do what you can. This is Gold Ivy signing off. Listen to your truth and go chase your gold. <laughs>